Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how you can use WebSockets within your own Go-based programs to do some really cool real-time stuff. Now by the end of this tutorial we will have covered what WebSockets are and we'll also have covered how you can build a simple WebSocket application in Go that connects to a front-end JavaScript application. Now the full text version of this tutorial will be available on my website and I'll be leaving a link to this in the description below. So what are WebSockets? Well, WebSockets are upgraded HTTP connections that live until the connection is killed by either the client or the server. It's through this WebSocket connection that we can perform duplex communication, which is just a really fancy way of saying we can communicate to and from the server using a single connection. Now, the real beauty of WebSockets is that they use a grand total of one TCP connection and all the communication is done over this single long-lived TCP connection. Now this drastically reduces the amount of network overhead required to build real-time applications using WebSockets, as there isn't that constant polling of HTTP endpoints required. Cool, so let's dive into our code editor of choice and start programming. Now as you can see here, I've got an incredibly simple Go program up and running already, and I can run that within my terminal by calling go run main.go. Cool. Now, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Go modules. So in order to do that, we'll need to initialize a project by calling Go mod init and the location of our repository, which is going to be Go WebSockets tutorial, like so. That will create a Go mod file. And then from there, we'll be able to import the various packages that we're going to be using in this tutorial. Okay, so now that we've got a basic Go program up and running, let's start off by creating a simple HTTP server that simply returns hello world when we hit it on localhost port 8080. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just above my main function, I'm going to create a new function called setup roots. And within this, I'm going to set up a few roots. So handle func and the homepage root. And this will map to a homepage function that will define in just a second. And the next route we're going to do is handle func and WebSocket, which will go to our WebSocket endpoint function. Now, because we're going to be using the HTTP package, we're going to have to import it up at the top here by doing net slash HTTP. And finally, in our main function, we want to call the setup roots function. Cool. So that is now complaining about missing these two functions. So let's define them now. Now we'll start off with the homepage function, which is going to, is going to be a nice and simple function. It takes in the HTTP response writer and a pointer to a HTTP request. And we're simply going to return a hello world or a homepage string to the response writer, like so. Cool. And let's now do the WebSocket endpoint function, which is going to take in the same arguments. So response writer and another pointer to a HTTP request. And again, we just want to fmt.fprintf. To the response writer, we're going to say WebSocket endpoint. Awesome. So one final thing we'll have to do to kick off our web server is to listen. So I'm going to do log.fatal and I'm going to do http.listen and serve. And we're going to do this on port 8080, as I said before. And we're going to pass in nil as the second parameter here. And if we save that and come into our terminal, we should be able to kick this off by typing go run main.go. Perfect. So that looks like it's up and running. And just to double check, we can come into the console and hit localhost 8080, and you should see that homepage is successfully returned. So we've now got a basic web server that we can build our WebSocket endpoint on top of. Now, in order to create a WebSocket endpoint, we're effectively going to need to upgrade an incoming HTTP connection, and we're going to be doing this using the gorilla slash WebSocket package. So if I come back into my code editor, and I'm going to come up to the top here and I'm going to do the following. So import github.com slash gorilla slash websocket. Cool. 
Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to define uh, an upgrader. So var upgrader equals websocket.upgrader. And this will be a struct that takes in the read buffer size, which is just going to be 1024. And it's also going to take in a write buffer size. So write buffer size. Cool. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is come down into this WebSocket endpoint function, and I'm going to simply remove what we had there before. Now, in here, I'm going to want to do the following. So, upgrader.checkOrigin, and this will equal a function which takes in the pointer to the HTTP request and returns a bool. And I'm simply going to return it true for now. Now, this is just a quick and dirty way of saying that I want to allow any connections into my WebSocket endpoint, regardless of what the origin of that connection is. Now, this will effectively allow us to do a second JavaScript application that will then connect into this without it throwing a cause error. So just under this, we're now going to want to try and tackle upgrading this connection to a WebSocket connection. Now, we can do that using the upgrader.upgrade um, function, which is available from the gorilla slash WebSocket package. So I want to do WebSocket or error equals upgrader.upgrade, just like we said. And it's going to take in the response writer, the request, and a nil parameter. And then because we might get an error here, we want to handle that. So if error does not equal nil, we then want to say log.printline that error. And then we want to say log.printline client successfully connected like so. Cool. So at this point, we have successfully been able to upgrade an incoming connection, but we aren't listening on that connection for any new messages, and we're not able to send any messages down that connection. So let's first tackle the problem of listening permanently for incoming messages. Now I'm going to create a new reader function, which will take in this WebSocket connection. And it's going to kick off a for loop that will run forever. And then I'm going to do connection.readMessage, which will return message type p or error. And connection.readMessage. And then again, let's handle that error. So if error does not equal nil, log.printline the error. And we want to return in this instance if there is an error. And then just below this, we want to log.printline the incoming message, like so. Cool. So I want to be able to echo back that message to the client. So in order to do that, I can use the connection.write message function. Now I can do if error equals connection.write message. And I can pass in the message type and the bytes. And I can say if error is not nil, then log.println that error and return once again. Cool. So coming back into my WebSocket endpoint, I then want to kick off this reader function like so. And that should be us good to go. So let's try actually run that within the terminal. So I'm going to control C my existing server and type go run main.go. And I have not passed in the WebSocket connection. So that solves that. Let's try kick it off once again. And my server has successfully started. Awesome. So now that we seemingly have a working WebSocket endpoint, why don't we go ahead and create a, a new front end application that will attempt to connect into this WebSocket endpoint. Now I'm going to do this by creating an index.html file. And it's going to have just the basic HTML tags. And then I'm going to create a nice bit of JavaScript just at the bottom. And within this, I'm going to do let socket equals new WebSocket. And it's WebSocket, capital C S. And I'm going to pass in the WebSocket protocol slash localhost. And our server is running on 8080. And the WebSocket endpoint is WS like so. And I'm going to say just below this console.log attempting WebSocket connection. 
and then I'm going to listen in for any socket events. So socket dot on open, and I'm going to say console dot log successfully connected. And I'm going to want to send a hi from the client message up that socket. So socket dot send hi from the client. Cool. I'm also going to want to define the socket dot on close event listener, and that'll look something like this. So console dot log socket closed connection. And I'll just print out the event and I'll say socket dot send. Uh, actually, no, I'll delete that. I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to do socket dot on error. So if we ever get any errors from our socket connection, we're going to do error. And we're going to do console dot log socket error and just simply print it out like so. Cool. So I'm going to create a new terminal here. Or actually, I'll come back into my original one and just split this terminal. And now I'm going to use the live server node module in order to run this locally on a different port. And it'll open up on localhost port 59414. And then if I come into my editor or my browser, sorry, open this up. And if I inspect the element, view the console, I should see that attempting WebSocket connection is printed out and that it has successfully connected. Now, if I come back into my editor, I can see in the logs that the client has successfully connected and I can see the message from that client. Cool. So one final thing I want to do is to add the socket.on message uh, event handler and I'm going to say message. And I'm simply going to console.log this message like so. Save that. Live server should then reload my page. And if I open up my browser and open up the new live server port, open up the console, I should see that the client message, hi from the client, has been sent down my WebSocket connection and been echoed back by the WebSocket.write message function within our reader function. Awesome. So in this tutorial, we've managed to cover some of the basics of WebSockets and how you can build a simple WebSocket-based application in Go using the Gorilla slash WebSocket package. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful. And I'm hoping it highlighted some of the main benefits of using WebSockets within your own Go applications. Now, if you did enjoy this, you may like my tutorial series, which utilizes WebSockets to build a real-time chat application using both React and Go. Now, it covers things like how you would pull WebSocket connections and do things such as broadcast updates to all connected clients. Now, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. If you did indeed like this video, then please leave a like. And if you think I could do anything better, or if you think I've missed anything or have any suggestions, then please let me know in the comments section below. And as always, please subscribe to my channel for more programming content. Cheers.